hi everyone welcome to the lightroom i am super excited to have you here today watching this video or listening to this on podcast i am so excited to have you if you're a returning subscriber welcome if you are new here double welcome to you welcome to both parties actually i'm so glad to have you here today how was your week i really want to know if you can let me know in detail in the comment section i would love to read how your week went i'll just give you a rundown of mine before i get into today's video so i had a very full week there were ups and downs and highs and lows but my weekend was particularly colorful so on friday i was in ogun state nigeria celebrating my brother's matriculation it was so so real for me because i remember when this boy was born i prayed so much for a younger brother i was the only child for about seven years and then when my brother came it was truly a miracle so watching him from that very moment till now where his heads and shoulders taller than me and all dressed up in his suit telling me about his accounts and exams the next day i was just amazed at how far god has brought him how far we've come i'm just so excited and so grateful and i was happy that i was able to celebrate this moment with my brother with my family it was it was it was good i won't even lie the same day was my father-in-law's birthday and when i think about my relationship with my in-laws i am deeply grateful to god because i don't know how to explain how it feels to be included into another family that is not your birth family i don't feel alienated i don't feel like i'm not welcome even before we got married they always welcomed me so warmly and i'm just thankful like deeply thankful this was on friday my father-in-law's birthday and my brother's matriculation then on saturday my brother-in-law that's my husband's brother got married traditionally so um it was a very interesting event i tell you <laughs> it was both virtual and physical but it was beautiful like yoba weddings and uh, greater than greater than greater than she does how we type it yeah the yoba weddings are really good i'm Igbo. i married a yoba man and i'm so thankful i did i love the mix of cultures i love yoba weddings so much the last wedding that i attended the last yoba traditional wedding i attended before this was in 2020 and i was um the bride's hair stylist and her niece's friend i was shy invited to the wedding and i was so blown away by the whole culture like everybody dobaling and everything and this time since it was family my husband had to dobale for his like on his brother's behalf and then i had to kneel down as per sister of the groom and it was just so colorful and interesting and then all the alagas collecting money every time checkpoints checkpoints it was just rich it was a very colorful wedding and i'm grateful to god for it so yeah i had a very full weekend and these are some of the reasons why there was a delay with this episode apart from work being um particularly a lot this week i also had to attend to this family matters great family matters thankfully and yeah that's my weekend so please let me know in the comment section how your weekend went so this episode is very dear to my heart because the last series we just concluded is it a sin to span over several topics is kissing a sin in a dating relationship is it a sin to have did we talk about premarital sex i think we did hmm, did we yeah in in bits and shadows across different videos yeah is it a sin to smoke is it a sin to take drugs is it a sin to gamble is it a sin to watch big brother we had different videos across this series so if you've missed anyone please go back and watch the videos if you have any topic requests please feel free to let me know in the comment section but when i was just thinking about this series and how it works even as a listener because i do listen to the podcast i listen to the lightroom not just because i edit or i do quality control for the podcast but when the lightroom started lord told me that work of lightroom would start in my heart meaning that i would need the videos as well so 
I am deeply grateful for this series as well because the Lord has taught me a lot through it and yeah, I'm thankful. But thinking through it, I just imagine now you've heard that this is a sin, this is not a sin. What do you do without information? What do you do when you struggle with a particular thing that you have now realized from the word of God that is a sin? And there are so many ways to answer this question, but I would share one profound way that I have also been relearning on my Christian journey. So a couple of, not a couple of days ago, very recently actually, I was talking to the Lord about certain things and just my journey on the fruits of the Spirit. I don't think I'm an impatient person, but there is something about driving in Lagos that just reveals a different layer of chisum. Like, I mean, I don't get to insult the drivers or anything, but my disposition is obviously, obviously different from when I'm in a typical normal setting. And trust me, driving in Lagos can do that to anybody, I strongly believe, because it's the ghetto. I mean, how do you wake up in the morning and you want to drive somewhere, but you're not only driving for yourself, you're driving for yourself and the car in front of you, the car beside you, the car behind you, because people can just be moving anyhow. But even in those seasons, even in those periods, even in the annoyance that is driving in Lagos, patience is supposed to be a fruit of my spirit. So I was just reflecting on that and how, you know, I've had to evolve in my learning of patience as a fruit of the spirit it may not seem like a big deal to you because you're like ah but you know it's lagos and it's not a big deal it's not like a sin sin like that for you to have road rage and all of that but when the apostle paul describes the fruits of the spirit in galatians 5 16 he talks about patience and if patience is a fruit of the spirit impatience is not a fruit of the spirit in any way shape or form let's not get used to excusing things that should not normally be excusable while we are human and we still make mistakes because we live in a fallen body and we have not been totally redeemed yet like i mean we've received salvation in christ jesus and we have a promise that jesus is coming back for us in that moment when he comes back for us he's going to take us and we will be with him and the father we'll be with him in glory and we would not be bound by the limitations of this sinful flesh. We will not be bound by the limitations that this sickness, this body brings in forms of sickness, in form of death, in form of desires to still do things that do not please God. And it's helpful when you then see how Paul addresses the fruits of the flesh and how you combat the fruit of the flesh. So let's read from Galatians 5 verse 16. It says, so i say walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh many times when i've read this chapter in um Galatians, i've been tempted to skip over that verse and just go right into listing what the fruits of the spirit are but i want you to pause for a minute and just reflect on this verse again so i say walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh the later part is quite clear Gratifying the desires of the flesh means like giving in to the desires of the flesh. Well, what does it mean for Chisum, who still lives in a physical earthly body, to walk by the Spirit? To walk by the Spirit simply means to seek and follow the guidance of the Spirit. If you read in simpler versions like NLT, Message, it breaks it down this way. To seek and follow the leading of the Spirit. So if chisom if david if tola seeks and follows the guidance of the spirits tola chisom or david would not gratify the desires of the flesh and paul explains why for the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh that is why when you want to pray your heart wants to pray but your body wants to just look at two more instagram reels and those two more instagram reels will end up being two hours on instagram before you know it your eye is closing you say ah i need to wake up tomorrow for work oh rinse repeat you wake up in the morning and you're like oh let me pray but you're like ah what if i missed a message on whatsapp and then you enter the 
same loop. Your heart really wanted to pray, but your flesh fought you and sometimes your flesh wins. But if you walk by the Spirit, that guardians that the Spirit was giving you in that moment is that once you woke up, the desire was there to um, pray. The desire was there not to open IG first. But your flesh wanted to open IG first. Your flesh wanted to see how well your post was performing from the night before. Your flesh wants to see if your crush has finally replied you. Maybe they have seen your DMs after all these days and they finally replied you. Your flesh was craving something and your spirit was craving something else. In following verses, verse 19, Paul then goes to describe the works of the flesh in detail. And he says the acts of the flesh are obvious because they really are sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft. Now, we've talked about this a lot, even in our previous episodes, but there are some sins that are very obvious, you know, and when we see it or we, in our lives or even in other people's lives, we tend to glorify these things above the sins that people cannot see. For instance, when you hear that this person has cheated on his wife or, or this person has slept with somebody in church or like you, they're just the ah factor to it but that same ah factor is kind of reduced when you hear that this person does not like this person or this person envies this person or this person said something bad about this person but in god's eyes they are both sins i gave an example in one of our episodes d in the grading system starts from below 45 so 44 is a d 44 over 100 is a D. 29 over 100 is a D. It doesn't matter if you got 44 over 100. 44 over 100 is still a D. So you're not much better than the person that got 29 over 100. You have both falling short of the mark. So you that you have been lying, you have been doing petty petty thefts, your parents will give you 500. The change was 120, but you give them 100 naira. All those little, little things. And then the person that has been philandering has like 10 sexual partners. So of you, D, all of us, D, well, thank God for the grace of God. In Christ Jesus, we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. So the purpose of talking you through the entire series of is it a sin to was not to put you in a corner, start making you ask, why am I this way? Would Jesus love me? No, that was not the point. The point was to shine the light of God on gray areas that the devil may try to confuse you about. Because these days, gossiping is now so popular and glamorous. Like, you see skits all around of people saying things like, ah, if you tell me something, it's safe with me, but it's my partner as well. And I'm like, when did this become funny? Because it's funny to be to your own secret that somebody does that with. Do you understand? So let's not um, get used to calling gray areas when they are not really gray areas. And when they are gray areas, if the light of God has been shown in scripture about this thing, let's shine it clearly. That was the point of the series, Is It a Scene 2? And there are so many people that had questions that they didn't really know what the word of God said about this thing. And I answered those questions to the best of my knowledge from the word of God and my own personal perspectives. So that was the point. But there was no part of that video or no part of the series that was intended to leave you condemned in your sins. That is not the point. The Holy Ghost wants to walk with you. The Holy Ghost wants to walk in you. The supernatural work of righteousness that the Lord gives is not something we can accomplish on our own. If it was something we could accomplish on our own, there would be no need for Jesus to die. If it was something that we could accomplish on our own, there would be no need for the giving of the Spirit. There would be no need for all of that. In Philippians, Paul puts it this way. For God is working in you to will and to do of his good pleasure. Before that, he says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. And then you may like, oh, I have to work out my salvation. But in the very next verse, he says, for it is God working in you to will and to do of his good pleasure. So if there is anything in this series that I have shared so far that you are struggling with and you're like, God, how do I work this out? I am saved, but I struggle with this. I want you to realize that 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 part of you that aches that you've made this mistake that part of you that aches that you're struggling with this thing is god working with you 
is it's it's a sign that God is working on your conscience concerning that thing. It's a sign that God is purifying your conscience. That this thing that did not mean much to you before you got saved, now that you are saved, is a big deal to you. Now that you are saved, you are worried about doing these things. But as believers, we are not called to you know cower under the fear of sin because Jesus has won the power over sin and He has given us that power. And if we would walk by the Spirit. If we would seek and follow the guidance that the Spirit gives, we will not gratify the desires of the flesh. And the truth is, if you don't actively seek and actively follow the leadings of the Spirit, you will end up walking in the fruits of the flesh. Like, it's a case where you have a phone. Mm. And you are just using the phone, using the phone, using the phone. You do not charge it. You don't have plans to charge it. The phone would not automatically retain its battery. It will keep degrading till it's zero. All right. If you do not charge it or if it's not connected to power, it would, it would just go. Let me know if we use the phone. Let me use Wi-Fi, for example. So we installed Wi-Fi in our house a couple of days ago. And the annoying thing when we first installed it was that once they take light like this, bam, the Wi-Fi is gone. And I'm like, in this Nigeria, how we do it when there's no lights? We will not have Wi-Fi. And we walk from home like, oh my God. We need to do something about this. So we bought a power bank for the Wi-Fi router. Now, when they take lights, the power bank automatically comes on and, con and the Wi-Fi router continues running on the power bank's power. Once the light is back on, it, it keeps charging because the router needs to be constantly connected to a power source to keep running. That may not be a perfect example, but I hope it paints some form of a picture to you on how this works if you do not connect to the spirit if you do not constantly yield to the spirit you would walk in the flesh it's a given now what are the fruits of the spirit love joy peace forbearance kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control and some of these fruits of the spirit are so underrated for instance goodness like goodness i'll talk more on the fruits of the spirit in weeks to come like that's our next series just having conversations on love conversations on patience conversations on kindness we'll have that in the weeks to come and if you have any questions ahead of time before about those videos please just let me know in the comment section and i'll do my best to factor your answers into those videos or even make new videos about them but if you walk in this fruit of the spirit you just find that it is easier to fight against the fruit of the flesh for instance if you genuinely love a person you will murder them and the way god has called us to love is different from our human standard of love human standard of love is if you do me i do you if you love me i love you if you're good to me i'm good to you but jesus standard of love is because we are believers because we are his followers we will love those that hate us we will love those who despise us and persecute us we will love those who do not deserve our love because that's the kind of love that god has shown to us and if he has shown it to us in our sin in the moments where we do not deserve it which is every time by the way and we cannot show it to other people that means we've not really understood his love and i'll talk about this more in conversations on love but if you love a person you will not murder them if you love a person you will not speak evil about them if you love a person you would seek their own good above yours another fruit of the spirit self-control if you walk in self-control as the holy ghost walks in you you will not cheat on your partner you will not fornicate because i know kanji is bad but you won't die honestly it's survivable i will tell you that for free self-control but like combat certain things of that are already fruits of the flesh the crux of this video is this you cannot walk in righteousness as god wills by your own abilities it doesn't work by waking up and saying Number one, I will not do this. Number two, I will not do this. In secondary school, I used to have a temper issue. And I, I really thought of several ways to walk out of this temper issue. I, I shared a video on this on my birthday in April. You can go back and um, watch the full video. But I'll just give you a summary of the gist. So 
I used to have temporary issues and sometimes I'll wake up in the morning and I'm like, okay, today I will not talk much. Like I want to be able to count my words today so that I will not have fits of anger or outbursts in class or say the wrong things. And then I will go through like breakfast time. I'm quiet, I'm gentle as a dove. I'll go through period one, period two, period three, short break and I'm good. Long break, somebody will just come and do something absolutely ridiculous. Maybe they take your geography notes or they clean the board when you're not done writing your social studies notes or you get to dining home, they've cleared the food. Maybe there are 10 pieces of meat for 10 people. But you get to dining home, there's one person on the table and just two pieces of meat left. Is it your father's house? So all the self-control you've been trying to keep in since morning, you just unleash it. On that person so I know what it feels like to make lofty goals make plans with genuine intentions not to do bad things but there's only so much that your willpower can do that's why many new year resolutions fail and I know you may be waiting to the new year to have a better habit I know you may be waiting to the new year to overcome the addiction but let me tell you if the new year comes and you are not working by the spirit you will continue to go through that vicious circle it's, it's not it's not sweat it's just what it is you're not designed to walk in the fruits of the spirit by the power of the flesh it just doesn't happen because your flesh will constantly fight against you that's why when you wake up and you're supposed to pray you feel like looking at ig that's why when somebody maybe offends you in your head you have already rehearsed the lines you will used to argue with that person i know it's because i've done it before Maybe somebody annoys you. You've planned the arguments that, ah, if I tell her A, she'll reply me with B, C, D. So I already know that she'll say B, C, D. So now I'll say E, F, G, H to her. But then the Holy Ghost now tells you, don't talk about it. And let's say you agree, oh, Holy Ghost, no problem. You don't talk about it. The person does the same thing again. And the Holy Ghost says, don't worry. Just tell her you're not angry or just pray for her you see that pray for her part the thing used to pinch me because there is something that offense does offense makes you feel like you have the righteous self-righteous upper hand you have been offended so this person is wrong and you are right but the holy ghost tempers that in your heart because the the self-righteousness that offense tends to produce is not a working of the spirit as a believer, you are perpetually forgiven, just as the Lord freely forgave you. When you think about other people that have annoyed you, if you multiply their annoyance to the infinite sum you can think of, God has forgiven you more. Because even if you do everything that that person does, God would forgive you. God has paid the price for your forgiveness. So if he has forgiven you of something so big, there is nothing that anyone does to you that you cannot forgive. And if you think there's something like that, you're behaving like the wicked servant in scripture who the king forgave him of a lofty sum, but he could not let go of an insignificant sum. Right. The crux of this video, again, is walk by the spirit. It would always be worth it. Whether you're fighting an addiction or you're fighting gossip or you're fighting envy and slander, walk by the spirit. In the weeks to come, I will show you more and more on this sharing some of my personal learnings and journeys, sharing many things from Bible study. And I'm just really excited about this series. There are other things I'm excited about for in the coming weeks. First of all, this is the last week in November. And I feel like we've been in November for two months, but oh well. We're walking into December right now, and I'm going to be equipping you with everything you need to end the year strong. And I also want you to try your best to live this month of December outside of yourself. Don't just think about what you get yourself for Christmas. Think about people that don't know the true meaning of Christmas, don't know who we should really be celebrating in this season. Think about them. Then think about people that don't even experience the mundane joys of Christmas. Like they don't get new Christmas clothes, they don't get new Christmas shoes. And if your heart goes out to them, if you really want to do something about it, the Lightroom is coming up with an initiative on the 24th of December. We are going to be going out and taking the gospel of Jesus to children in the streets of Ajigunle. To be honest, 
<laughs> the venue has not been fully confirmed i'll share that with you in the weeks to come in our subsequent videos but the plan right now is that we're going to take the gospel of jesus to children in low-income households first of all there's an initiative for these children to train them in school but beyond that we want to take the joys of christmas to these children let them eat christmas rice with us let's share a meal together and just enjoy what it would be like to celebrate christmas with people that love and care for them and also we'll be sharing the most important joy of this season jesus it's amazing and i invite you to partner with the lightroom for this first of all i i'll put things in the description on how you can reach out to us so it may be a link that you could fill and i'll reach out to you personally to just give you more details about it but i am excited about this project it's my first time doing it last year what we did for christmas was getting people to share their christmas story so talk about christmas with jesus being the reason for the season and we had a giveaway for fifty thousand naira. to be honest that fifty thousand naira came from my pocket like the Lightroom account was my account. So everything we had paid for was mainly for my pocket. And if I'm being honest with you as well, everything I've planned for up to this moment is from my pocket for these children. But I just realized that one of the places I want to work with the venue is at least twice, like children, they are at least twice the budget I had. So I really don't know the final details of how we saw that out, but I know that God has asked me to do this and I'm excited about this. And if you would want to partner with me concerning this, I will put the details in the description and I really, really implore you to do this with me as well. I would really appreciate this. Thank you for sticking to this point in the video. Thank you for watching this thank you for subscribing if you have subscribed already thank you for subscribing now if you have not subscribed already thank you for liking this video if you have already thank you for liking it now if you have not done that already please share this with a friend ask me questions you have in the comment section i am here for your growth in the gospel i am here for you to be more audacious about your faith and i'm just excited about what is to come in the coming weeks what is to come in the coming weeks yeah i'm excited thank you all i love you have an amazing day or night ahead bye bye